All right, so I had, I'll do one more um, discussion here. I don't have any graphics for it. I was gonna pull some up and try to find one for you. But a lot of people ask, okay, Aaron, what is this cap? You keep saying the word cap. Now, if you live here long enough, you hear it a lot. Some of you probably grasped the idea, some of you haven't. Jody was asking me tonight over, uh, we were sitting on the patio, she was talk talking about this cap. <laughs> I said, all right, so this is a good way to visualize it, right? All right, so I'm gonna start on the inside of your house first to give you the visualization, and then we're gonna move outside. So on the inside, you have a little red balloon, and you fill it up with helium, right? So there's, you can put in a little bit of helium, or you can put in a lot of helium. Let's just say you were put in a little bit of helium, and you let it go. What does it do? It just hangs out there, probably bubbles up around your head, maybe even kind of goes down a little bit. So it's not really moving much, right? Okay, so now you're gonna pump it full of helium, fine. Now that thing just goes wide up, seems to let go of it. Now what does it hit? It hits the ceiling. What's the ceiling? The ceiling represents the cap in the atmosphere. Uh, the balloon represents a parcel of air. In other words, hot air that's trying to rise through the ceiling. Now I can't make it because that ceiling's pretty strong. There's no holes in the ceiling. So it just bounces around that balloon looking for a hole, looking for a weakness so we can just punch on through and it's not gonna find it because that inversion layer of temperatures up there is just too too strong. So the balloon just bounces around, doesn't even do anything. That happens tomorrow. It's clear skies, a little dusty from the southwest winds out there, um, and that's it, no storms. And we have a nice evening, and then the cold front comes in, and we get some storms later on. Happens all the time. Matter of fact, you have a lot of these um, dangerous setups, and nothing ever materializes because the cap is always there, and it's usually pretty strong. So if the cap wasn't there, you wouldn't want to live here because <laughs> we have these things all the time, and nobody want, nobody has any time for that. So luckily the cap, if, if the instability in the environment, the cape and all that stuff goes up, the shear goes up to produce those type of storms, the good news is the cap goes along with it. All right, so now we know visually what happens that prevents that balloon from going up. So that ceiling here in your home is like the ceiling in the atmosphere. Um, you just can't see it, it's invisible, but it's there. Okay, so what happens? All right, so now let's, let's take out the red balloon. Let's go with the big boy balloon, all right? Remember the big hot air balloons? and all that heat that they use to make those balloons rise. So we're gonna get rid of the helium idea, but we're gonna pump in the heat idea. Heat idea, again, is the same thing with that balloon, with that um, big, big balloon, just like a parcel of air would be with heating up the temperatures at the ground level we live. You add heat to the temperatures, the air starts to rise. You add heat to that balloon, it starts to rise. All right, so you got the concept. All right, so that air's going up, the balloon's going up. It starts to get to that cloud layer up there that you may see. There still may be some residual clouds out there and it starts to um, stop, all right? Well, that balloon up there may have hit the inversion layer. Well, how do you get past that? Well, you have to push yourself past it. Well, how do you do it? You gotta crank up the heat. So you crank up the heat and all of a sudden that balloon will bust through that little layer of warm air because that, that air was warmer than the balloon was, but not anymore because you cranked up the heat. So now you can go. And now you're smooth sailing off to storm you build. Same thing with that parcel of air. How do you get that thing to, to bust through that layer? You gotta give it a better push. You gotta give it a good kick in the rear. How do you do that? You increase the temperature at the ground level. So instead of an afternoon temperature of 80, you crank it up to 85. That's not good enough, crank it up to 90. That's the equivalent of cranking up that heat in the, in the hot air balloon. And so now you get that parcel of air just shooting up, busts a hole right through that um, ceiling in the atmosphere, that inversion, that capping layer, and off we go to the races and storm bells. So in that case, if you noticed my terminology from in the house, it was looking for a weakness, right? To get through the ceiling, it couldn't find one. Outside, it's the same idea, it's looking for a weakness. So what, and that's why when we look at the model data tonight, uh, only one model even had a storm anywhere. How many did it have? Um, it had one here in central Oklahoma. Now the other model, I, I, I take that back, there were two. The other one um, had, I think, three storms. They are even across northern Oklahoma and southern um, Kansas. So, but you notice they didn't do two storms everywhere because again, they're looking for weaknesses in the capping layer to produce the convection. So how do you get the weakness? Well, I showed you several examples um, of what I look at to help get that weakness. You get the, the wind, you know, from the jet stream at various levels, a little trough axis that comes through, anything you get of forcing, brute forcing from synoptic or forcing from con convective processes, um, forcing from just heat, mixing, all kinds of stuff. You look for it all. And you, then you look for little spots where the atmosphere is gonna cool. So if I can find little spots where the atmosphere gets colder here, it may be warmer here, but colder here, 
that colder there represents the weakness in the ceiling, represents the weakness in the capping layer. And then anything hot down there can take advantage of it and bust through real easy. So that's what you look for. You look for little pockets where you think the best um, ingredients are going to come together. 